so our troops are still in transit and they're going to arrive right on time not sure for what exactly but they're going to be right on time okay he's asking me directly if we're having an affair so let's see his personal combat skill is 11 my personal combat skill is 15 so <laughs> um, the deceitful jester I will kill him we are proud so and we're also an aggressive leader so I think yeah this this is the thing we're going to do we have a chance of becoming wounded ourselves but we'll see seems nothing happened which is fine Speaking of nothing happened, let's hope he doesn't decide to attack while we're on the move. And we actually get to combine our troops here. That would be nice. Right. Very good. So what I do here is I select our troops and combine them. That way uh, we make sure that they all fight as one force. And don't get scattered around. Right, of course we won this siege. Eventually we're going to have to fight here. There's not... Otherwise this war's going to go on forever. Someone has to give. Okay, okay, we're moving now because we now have the upper hand in, in terms of troops. Okay, we stopped moving. It's a little bit hard to tell because these are so small. You can of course always click on them and see where they're trying to go. Okay, yeah, let's, let's see if he wants to spend some more time with us. Maybe we become friends. I think friends is good in this. See, I don't always read everything. That, that was kind of like an automatic thing. All right. I think these days have really helped me getting Kurumdel to know and appreciate me better. We have passed most of our time in long in my longhouse discussing of the most disparate topics. So we have various options here. Um, it was good meeting a new friend. I've truly been a model Catholic host, <laughs> which changes our uh, opinion by 20 because he is a he's a religious person and he likes it. So that's what we're going to do. 20 opinion for 10 years. That's really worthwhile. So our vassal, he loves us. He really does. There's no doubt in our relationship. So sadly, we have contributed to the one defeat which lost uh, almost 5% in battle score. Oh well. But he could easily attack the enemy because I now understand what this number is. Because these grey attached units, they are part of this army. They're just not my allies. So this is the allied score and this is the actual army size. There we go. See, you always learn a little bit as you play. There's always something that you might have wondered about for a month or years. And then suddenly it becomes and, and makes sense. So Northumbria is turning some of its wars around. Apparently. I can't click his army, so I can't... But this is a full army. It's all red. So what is in here counts in the end. Okay, he is besieged successfully, but he's already leaving again. Because he keeps sieging. Instead of sticking to his area. And just keeping what he needs to have. It's a little bit infuriating. But Northumbria has turned their eye on uh, their other attacker. And they are winning this one. And they're also winning the other one. So they have turned around all battles, really. 
And we've leveled out on our income and outcome. We're losing a little bit of money, but not enough. Okay, we have a lot of prestige and we're not going to use the tribal army anytime soon. So let's build something sensible. Uh, we could build these, which is kind of cool because we get heavy infantry. But we also don't really need them. Morale of armies is good. Retinue size is good. Levy reinforcement rate is good. Archers, not so interesting. Levy size and garrison size. These are more interesting. These are the most interesting, but we can't afford them. Oh. Okay. Our son seems to suffer from food poisoning. So let's let's have our court physician because we need him for alliances. So we can't let him die. At the very least, we need him for alliances. Right, what was I talking about just a second ago? About this. Let's go with a weaponsmith. Morale of armies. That's that's a worthy investment. Or since we're very close, let's wait for this. We should be able to see now that we are at war. Should be able to see raise tribal army. No, is it here? Maybe no, not here either. Not entirely sure where I raise my tribal army anymore. Maybe that's not even, that's not even a thing. Maybe they've taken that out. <laughs> we'll see. Maybe I can't, because it's not my own war. Several reasons for something not working, probably. So, as you can tell, during war, people die. And you have a maximum. So these are the raised. 538 are raised. We have an unraised, which is 148. Those are the ones that have replenished after those 148 have died already and 654 is uh is what we can have fully so we could stand down our troops on our own territory raise them up and go back with a larger force or we stay as we do we could raise our vassals but it doesn't really make a lot of sense they are not that interesting okay a son was born to us another son Oh, it's a grandson. Okay, so this is my heir's heir. Good. Very good. The line is secure. Very secure now. So let's have him become a proud Irishman. And let's see who we can uh, ally us with. Though this is so far off, we might actually go for someone who has a really, really good skill. So she's in Occitan and Aquitan. This is in France somewhere. It's not going to help us, but she's a genius. Which is really, really good. She's going to be a really good wife. So let's have her. Right. We could form an alliance, but it doesn't make a lot of sense. Distance and everything. It's not worthwhile. I'm just going to be happy that we're going to have a genius down the line. Which is an inheritable trait. Um... People are conspiring to kill my wife. Who would do that? Me, probably. Anyone else want to kill her? Oh yeah, our friend. He's he's really, he's really up for it. Let's get the bishop in on this. Uh, right. Let's check out the inheritable trait. Okay. So we check our guy and his betrothed. If a trait is green in a heart, that means it is inheritable and good. There are inheritable and bad traits as well, like this one. You can inherit depression. And these orangey, they can be transmitted because it's a disease. Not inherited, but transmitted. Slight difference. So our ally, he's just sieging all over the place. He'll eventually win with this tactic. Because it's unlikely that he, he's going to raise more troops. Now we could send our retinues as well. That way we would increase the army size even further. But we'd rather not spend them. They're precious. 
Can't raise more because we're already maxed out, which is fine. So right now we're just hoping for our ally to make decent decisions. So we can speed it up a bit. Nothing bad ever happens if you speed up in this game. No, I swear. Play it slow. Play it slow in the beginning. You will need to read a lot. You will need to figure out a lot. Don't, don't go racing down. As I said, I don't go beyond three, generally. Unless I'm really, really stuck in some weird situation where like, I'm a child and can't do much. Then I might. Alright. Okay, he's already very fond of me, so I'm stopping to sway him. Now let's see who could we need a good relationship with still. Uh... In court, there's really no one. Let's let's check our our friends here, because the higher their opinion of us, the better they perform, the more reliable they perform. So let's improve our relationship with him. All right, you can see these switch just now. Go back a little bit and see how all of these switch. That's because Northumbria has won a war. Or rather, they have settled in a war. They probably won it. But Northumbria now has less wars. One, two. They, they won this one. So now, whatever he had conquered is no longer conquered. So it's only the Scottish who are fighting anymore. You can see this little lock icon when they move. This means they can't change their direction anymore. And my wife is pregnant. Lovely. Generally, a good thing. At this particular moment, not so much. So, something I wanted to say earlier about uh, sieging. Whoever arrives first with enough troops to start a siege, meaning more troops than there's in garrison and levy, is going to be the leader of the siege. As you can tell here, it's this chief, uh, it's, it's this count. And while the king himself is here too, he's not leading the siege. So once the siege is won, the siege is going to go to them. They're going to hold this. And not the king, despite him contributing most of the troops. Which can be a little bit difficult if you need to siege to gain war score because a successful siege that's not in your or one of your allies names doesn't count oh at first the signs were small easily dismissed as coincidences but now they're becoming too frequent to be ignored my wife will give birth under an auspicious stars which is probably a positive modifier for our child not the worst thing. Okay, finally. Things are heating up. Okay. Northumbria has decided it's time to stop this cat and mouse game. Let's check this out. Okay, there's, there's many factors that go into a battle. Okay. So some of which we have already talked about. There's a lot to, to see here, even though it doesn't look like it. Now, the attacker has a malice because they are attacking across a river, which you can see up here. You can check where there are river crossings over here. Tells you. This one is basically surrounded by rivers. Now, he's fighting across a river, which decreases his troops' strength already. And he's fighting in hills against a defender who's using the hills to his advantage. Now, we can see the troops are fairly equally distributed. The morale is equal. But, the unit composition does say something. Let's check. Uh, LI stands for Light Infantry, HI stands for Heavy Infantry, LC for Light Cavalry, and A for Archers. So, as we can say, the Northumbrians mainly have Light Infantry. 
light infantry, some archers, some cavalry, and heavy infantry you can't really ignore. The same is true for the Irish, us, and the Pictish. So this is a pretty even battle in terms of unit composition. Now, there's one more factor, one more great factor that goes into this, which is the skill of the commanders. Okay? And you can see that his flank doesn't even have a commander against my son, who is really good at flanking. Um, so he's going to absolutely crush this. He's a flanker. He's going to win his side, no matter. There's these tactics that kind of m happen and matter. Our flank is really, really, really badly considered as well. So we might still lose this. Let's see. Yeah, our flank was already crushed. Once the flank is crushed, the opposing flank gets to attack somewhere else. So by how this army is set up, we are already at a great, great disadvantage. We have only one chance that this commander, he's actually my son, not this guy. This is my son-in-law. So let's hope our son is capable enough to... Well, he has a high moral defense, so that's good. Let's hope he's capable enough to defend against both these until he has killed his flank and evens it out again. Let's watch. Okay, they're going fairly even. And we were just completely obliterated. It can turn quickly, but my son is holding his strongest there. Good. Okay. A good tradition to have some gossip around a pregnant woman in order to keep her calm and distracted from the tribulations of this delicate time in her life. See, death in between of life being created. Um, let's ignore this. <laughs> we don't need piety right now. Now, I'm a little bit sick of this war, really. We have contributed enough and we're not swaying it. So we're going to, once our troops are done marching, we're going to take them back home. Because our friend here hasn't done all that much when it comes to decisions. And we would like to replenish our troops. So let's send them home. Uh, nope, they're still attached. So detach them and send them home. Now, if it was our own war, obviously, we would try and stay and try to turn it around, but I'm a little bit sick of the dancing around. Though, he just raised a bunch of troops again. So combined, we'll have a larger army than he does. So let's give this one more go. If he loses again, we're out. Last chance for him to utilize our troops sensibly. He has some more allies joining. So this is why there's more troops on the field now. In our name. A larger army can make up for a lack of Commanders. And I think we should put a commander on our flank as well. Let's put dad in the middle and the son on the side. Let's lead together. Like father and son, let's rule the galaxy. Um, wrong, wrong thing. A daughter was born to us. Lovely. She's a sweetie. So let's set her up as something. Again, doesn't matter all that much. And uh, let's get some cool alliances going. Yordale. No Irish. Let's see if we can't get a manual Irish alliance here. Nope. No one wants this. It's odd. So we'll have to 
deal with foreigners still. Glizvising. Welch. Where are you? This. 400. Ah, oh, yeah, fine. Fine, fine, fine. Let's do this. Gives us some prestige. I believe. So now they have 1,800 troops. And I hope this turns this around. Let's keep honoring our alliance. And let's create a new one. Well, rather. 